Worship for Sunday, June the 20th, 2021. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Now we are in the storm, the boat almost swamped. But Jesus is here now, and he will calm the storm. Even the wind and the waves listen to him as they would do their creator. We also listen to him and are called to believe in the power of God's word in him, a power greater than than all that we fear. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. We acknowledge with gratitude and respect that we are on the traditional land of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples who've cared for it for thousands of years. More recently, the Haldeman Proclamation of 1784 granted a tract six miles on either side of the Grand River from its source to Lake Erie to the Six Nations Haudenosaunee of the Grand River. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. A special welcome again this day to the people of St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Conestogo, just outside of Waterloo. They will be worshiping with us virtually while their pastor, Joanna, is on leave. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, and her mother, Karen Peters, for playing and, and recording a prelude and postlude for us today. Thank you also to our reader for this day, Josh Hyde. In these challenging and unforeseeable times, if you find that you need someone to talk to, or if you need any assistance, please email me or phone me at the church office, and I will help you. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with a word from our Eastern Synod Bishop, Michael Price. Hi everybody, Bishop Michael here to wish you, your families and communities a blessed and very celebratory Pride Month. It's been 10 years since our church rescinded a harmful and discriminatory ordination practice, which prevented a whole segment of society from serving in rostered positions of leadership. And since then, we've made strides toward becoming a more diverse and inclusive church, but we still have a long way to go. Thank you, my LGBTQIA plus siblings, for hanging in with us. Thank you for the gifts of grace, 
love and forbearance that you have faithfully shared with a church that once refused to share a full Christian life with you. Your faithful and persistent witness has changed us and made us better than what we were. And we are so very grateful. Let us pray. Creator, giver, and sustainer of life, today we celebrate the diversity of your beloveds. You have shown us what it looks like to radically welcome all of your children, to make space for your fullness to be experienced, and to be church together by co-creating safe and affirming spaces to live, worship, and thrive in. Thank you for teaching us to more faithfully love you and our neighbor. God of grace, hear our prayer. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And the prayer of the day for World Refugee Day from Canadian Lutheran World Relief. Let us pray. God, our Creator, you call your people to love you as you love without partiality, showing hospitality to the stranger, doing justice, speaking for those whose voices are not heard, and defending the rights of the marginalized. We give thanks for the work of Canadian Lutheran World Relief on our behalf. Help us to show your love in all that we do and say. May we see the face of your Son in the faces of all whom we are called to serve and love. Through whom we pray, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And the prayer of the day for National Indigenous Peoples Day, June the 21st, from the Anglican Church of Canada. Let us pray. Creator God, from you every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ who is our light and our life. Amen. The children's time. Fathers, I am so very glad that you're here today, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. Well, as you likely know, today is Father's Day, and so I have a story for you. A loving father used to sing his little children to sleep. He even learned a few lullabies to lend some variety to the task. And he kept up this task until one night he overheard his four-year-old give her younger sibling this advice. If you pretend you're asleep, she said, he stops singing. That was the end of the lullabies. I guess that father wasn't a very good singer if his children wanted him to stop, stop singing. We love our fathers even though they're not perfect, right? And our fathers love us even though we're not perfect. God is called our Father in heaven, and so we know that God loves us even when we're not perfect. So today we are thankful for our earthly fathers and for God, our heavenly Father. Now I, inv I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open facing up to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded and eyes closed to help you concentrate. Or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God.
Now let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of our fathers, and we thank you for being our Father in heaven. Help us to feel your fatherly love for us, and help us to share that love in return. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon. Christ calming the sea. Jesus' calming of the storm on the sea reveals his power over evil, since the sea represents evil and chaos. The boat on the sea is a symbol of the church and invites us to trust God amid life's turbulence. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. The Sermon Jesus Asleep. A ship crossing the Atlantic Ocean runs into a terrific storm. Concerned, one of the passengers asks the captain, Are we in danger? No, replies the captain, not at all. The sailors are still swearing. You'll know that we are in danger when you see them start to pray. In today's Gospel reading, the disciples, many of whom were accomplished fishermen, sailors, became so deathly afraid in a storm that they prayed for help to Jesus, who is fast asleep despite the raging storm. To the disciples in today's Gospel reading, it seems as if God is asleep and uncaring. And it can also seem to us that God is asleep and uncaring. Whether it's the danger of a summer storm, or the danger of other facets of life, we all experience waves which threaten. Aging parents, poor health, a child in trouble, a rocky marriage, financial fears, the loss of a loved one, the stress and difficulty of online classes, worrying about whose class you'll be in next year or on whose team you'll be in sports. Whatever it is, each of us has experienced waves which threaten. And, and after a year of COVID restrictions, we too cry out to God as the disciples did, do you not care that we are being swamped? Yet inherent in that very cry is faith and trust. You don't cry out to someone you don't believe in, and you don't cry out to someone whom you think cannot help. The disciples believed that Jesus did care and that he could do something about their situation. And so even their anguished cry is a sign of faith, however insecure and hesitant. It is difficult at times to trust God, especially in times of crisis and danger. Yet there are things we can do to weather the stormy times of life so that such times don't destroy our faith and cause us to doubt God's love and care. We can foster a good relationship with God when times aren't stormy. And our relationship with God is fostered as any relationship is, with communication and time, spending time with God in daily prayer and in weekly worship. Because the disciples' relationship with Jesus had been fostered before the storm started, because they had experienced that Jesus cared, they know they can turn to him for help when the storm tosses their boat. Having a solid relationship with God when times are good and life is calm 
helps us turn to God for help when times are bad. Learning to trust God in the little things makes it a whole lot easier to trust God in the big things. We often do that when we go to see the doctor. When you go to your doctor, have you noticed that in, at the end of the appointment, he or she tends to ask, is there anything else I can do for you? Doctors are trained to do that because they know that we often don't come right out with what is bothering us. Rather, we make an excuse and come up with smaller, less upsetting problems. It's as if we know that something is serious enough for us to see the doctor, but we can't quite risk saying what's really wrong. Or we may go to a doctor with several, or several times with little problems before we'll share what's really bothering us. That's true of our relationships with our doctors, and it's also true of our relationship with the great physician. Learning to trust in the little things makes it a whole lot easier to trust in the big things. So it's important that we go to God with our little requests, for those little requests move us to trust God's love and care when we need to ask something big. To have heard God speak when it's easier to hear makes it more likely that we will also hear God when the winds and the waves are crashing all around us. Weekly worship helps us to be plugged into God. And weekly worship also helps us to be plugged into the lifeline offered by God's people. That's a lifeline and an association which does us good, especially when times are rough. At a county fair, a farmer entered his skinny old farm horse to run in a race with beautiful and strong racehorses. Why in the world did you ever enter that old nag in a race you know she could never win? asked his neighbors. Because, said the farmer, I thought the association would do her some good. We Christians are called to be together, to associate with one another, to care for one another, to lean on one another, and to support, empower, and encourage one another. A friendship with God and God's people is something that will stand us in good stead when we need someone to lean on. Because in spite of what is sometimes preached on television, God has never promised to fix all our problems. Well, sometimes God does solve our problems. The calming of the storm in today's gospel reading is an example of that truth. But often God does not solve our problems. St. Paul, for example, was never freed from that thorn in the flesh, at least not until after his death. Sometimes, for reasons beyond our understanding, God chooses not to free us from suffering. And other times, God does not free us as quickly as we'd like. You know, even Jesus experienced what seemed like the absence of God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? was our Lord's cry from the cross. And at crucifying times, it might be our cry too. But we know that God did care for Jesus, that God was not asleep while Jesus was being crucified, and that God did not forsake Jesus. We know that resurrection followed the crucifixion. And so we know in hindsight that God was at work even in the darkness of Good Friday. Resurrection may come immediately, or not for three days, or not until we get to heaven. But resurrection will come. To know that can make it easier for us when waves threaten to capsize our boat, when we are so desperately longing for deliverance. Resurrection will come. So we need not feel abandoned when our problems are not fixed, or when God chooses to do things differently than you or I would hope resurrection will come. May the Holy Spirit help us to call on God in time of need and doubt, even when we believe God to be asleep and uncaring. And may the Holy Spirit strengthen our relationship with God in the calm times, so that we may know God's refuge in the stormy times. And the people said, Amen. was
there to hear your burning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. When you heard the wonder of the word, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your hearts as one. I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young. I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been, with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your burning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. To see We come before the triune God in prayer, saying, Lord, in your love, and responding, hear our prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be made known to all peoples. Move us to reconciled relationships with indigenous peoples. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Take care of those suffering from extreme heat and drought in the Western United States and move us to lower our carbon footprint to lessen such disaster. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. You keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest, especially the Middle East. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and social justice. Be with refugees to keep them safe and to help them find new homes. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. You are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray especially for those whom we name before you. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Bring healing and help. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. You dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders as our Eastern Synod gathers in our assembly this week. Grant knowledge, 
patience, and kindness, that through their leadership you may be exalted. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. You call us to care for all people. As our municipal government considers the location of a new consumption and treatment site for Cambridge, create timely and caring decisions that foster the common good, save lives, and recognize your love for each and every one of us. Bless the work of all who help in providing vaccinations. Keep our frontline workers safe and give them much needed rest. Move us each to do our part in following the guidance of our public health authorities so that our health system does not become overwhelmed. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them all. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.